So, if you look at India, per capita energy consumption is very low, but in terms of total energy consumption and GHG emission, we are now third and going up, we will become number two in time to come. Or as our GDP goes up, our energy usage and GHG emission increasing. We have also seen renewable energy cost very little in India, but renewable energy will require storage. Storage cost is extremely high and we will talk about it. So, if I have to have storage along with renewable energy, the cost goes up. So, to the extent that I can vary the coal plant up and down and gas plant, I can use some amount of renewable energy. Currently, I am using 8 percent, probably 50, 20 percent I can go because variation and other things are possible. But as I go above that, I will be in trouble. But then I have to control renewable energy. Hmm? And what do you do? This is what I am going to present a new approach that we have come up and are implementing in IIT Madras Research Park. Basically, fundamentally what do you have to do? Oh, we have all this AC grid in the country from renewable energy or from fossil fuel. Huh? This is the AC. You convert do AC to DC converter bi directional, you will convert this side as well as this side and then you have to have energy storage <coughs> available in demand. Whenever there is surplus, dump the electricity there, whenever there is deficit, bring it out. I will initially talk in context of a battery and particularly on lithium ion battery. So, how much does this storage cost? How do I take the storage cost into account? Ideally, what I would like to so, there when I buy a battery or when I make battery or buy a battery, it is very expensive. There is a large capital cost, but how does it add to my per kilowatt hour cost of electricity? We will compute that, but first the capital cost. Hmm? How much does it cost? 20,000 rupees per kilowatt hour, 15,000, 30,000 per kilowatt hour and I may buy 100 kilowatt hour or a 1000 kilowatt hour, a megawatt hour or 10 megawatt hour. Tomorrow, I may buy 100 megawatt hour or gigawatt hour because I am consuming electricity in terms of gigawatt hours. So, multiple gigawatt hour that I have to have a capital cost, batteries are expensive. Then when you buy battery, you charge discharge, you keep charging discharging. Every time you charge and discharge the battery, battery life goes down a bit. What do we mean by battery life? Battery cannot be charged, discharged forever, its capacity goes down hmm? slightly. So, you can do only so many time number of charge, discharge cycles. I have taught you in electric vehicles. So, what is the number of charge discharge cycles? Then what is the operation cost? If I charge once and discharge once, what is the cost? Hmm. Fortunately, not that much. How many cycles will I use per day? Will I charge in the morning, then use it in the afternoon, then again charge in the evening and then use it in the night or what do I do? Do I do it twice a day, once a day? 1.5 times a day, 3 times a day. You will say, wow, how does it matter? You will see it matters. Of course, I have a total number of cycles, I can do so many. If I do 3 times a day, my it will last less. Then I have to replace it. Huh? But you will see that if I can use 3 times a day, it is better because my you will you will see the computation, whether if I use it only one time a day or half a time a day, it is not as good. So, how many cycles will depend on when is renewable energy available and when is usage available. If I am using solar and wind both, maybe solar is peaking at some hours, that is the time I will charge, then solar is going down, that time I may discharge, 
then wind is peaking, peaking some other time, I may charge and then that is also going down. So, in fact, 1.5 times if solar and wind is there is quite easy, but 2 or 3 times a day if I can do it, my cost goes low. Then if I store it, does the energy decay? Fortunately, the kind of batteries that we are talking about does not decay very fast. Lithium ion practically no decay in a day, two days, five, four, five. but if you keep it for one month, you store it and keep it, then the issue is different. End to end energy efficiency, what you have to do? You have to take AC energy, convert it to DC, you have to charge, store, take out the energy, convert it back the DC energy into AC. What is the end to end loss? And typically for large battery you can get 95 percent, 96 percent, 97. So, there is a 4 5 percent loss for lithium ion battery that is kind of best that you can do. Probably 97 percent tomorrow it may become 98 percent, but that is you will get some losses there. Using all this you have to compute what is per cycle charge and discharge. And that I have to add to my renewable energy cost. Because per kilowatt uh, hour, how much is the generation cost, how much is the storage cost, so that I can get it whenever I want. We will do this exercise. What does it depend on? If you look at it, there are two kinds of cost, and pretty much anything there are always two kinds of cost. One is capital cost, one time cost. Of course, for overall, there is a lifetime of number of cycles and number of cycles used per day will give you the lifetime. So, capital cost and lifetime and operational cost, hmm? I have to take both into account. Operational cost can be easily calculated per kilowatt hour. If I am spending 50 rupees per day and I am generating 500 units, it is 10 paise per unit. Capital cost, how do you take into account? After some time, that capital initial whatever you have put in will become nearly 0. So, the terminology used for this, I taught you in electric vehicle course, is also what is called depreciation. You will depreciate the value, initial value of the battery over its lifetime. Its cost will keep coming down, finally, it becomes 0 then you are taking it out. And since you are put in a capital cost, you have to borrow money, you have to take the interest cost also into account. Interest cost plays a very important role, we saw that in this. So, for the capital expenditure, we will take depreciation interest, for the operational expenditure, we will take the actual operational expenditure, we will take the all the losses and we can calculate cost per kilowatt hour. There is yet another cost very often ignored. What is the environmental impact? Now, I am trying to see that my greenhouse emission does not take place and environment does not get impacted. But on the other hand, can this battery toxicity, hazards, recyclability are they have an important role? Very often this is ignored. We are trying to include that and say we want to make sure that the battery that we use does not have environmental impact. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to take the cost. So, let us take, do an exercise here. You know, you are generating renewable energy from the grid. It is not that all the renewable energy generated has to be stored, because much of the renewable energy whenever it is generated can be used. Some amount you have to store to use it when there is no renewable energy. Huh? When renewable energy is available, you will directly use it. You will not go through the storage. When renewable energy is not there, for that you have to store. Let us assume and we will play with this number, 70 percent is used directly and 30 percent through storage. 
Now you may ask why 70 percent? We change these numbers. Actually, 70 percent is fairly good number. Hmm? Particularly if you have a solar and wind plant, more than 70 percent. 70 percent can be used more or less instantly. Some 30 percent goes into this. We will talk more about it. So, let us assume that S is the store cost of the battery per kilowatt hour charging and discharging. So, and generation cost is 2 rupee 50. So, S 2 rupee 50 passe plus S is the cost when you put it through storage. When you do not put it through storage, cost is only 2 rupee 50 passe. The question is and this is done for 30 percent electricity, how much is S in India? We will compute this cost, but what we have done 70 percent is used directly 2 rupee 50 percent. 30 percent of the electricity is used 2 rupee 50 plus S, which if you convert it is 2 rupee 50 plus 0.3 into S. So, as long as you know the storage cost per kilowatt hour, you just need to do 0.3 times and add it to 2 rupee 50 percent. If I was using 50 percent electricity through storage, this 0.3 number will become 0.5. Very simple, school mathematics, nothing more than that. Now, let us take the batteries. What we did is that I took the batteries which are today available in my lab. I took two batteries, well one of them I know it is not much available. This is a LTO battery, expensive, but it can give you large number of cycles 14,000. The other is a high end advanced NMC. I have some low end NMC also, I have kind of ignored them because they are, they are not the best for long term storage. But this cell A is around 20,000 rupees. 20,000 rupees is not the cost of cell it is the cost of the full battery and the con converter. I have taken all that cost, hmm? 20,000 rupees per kilowatt hour. I can do about 7,000 cycles before I have to renew the battery. So, the cost here includes the grid connect cost, the converters and things like that. So, my total cost if I want to build a megawatt hour battery is 20,000 into 1000 that is what I have assumed. 20,000 into 1000 will become 2 crores, that is a cost per megawatt hour including converter. Okay. Now, I have taken interest rate. Now, interest rate in Europe, United States is 2 percent. In India, interest rate is high 10 percent, probably even more 11, 12, 13 percent. So, what I did is that I varied the interest rate from 2 to 10 percent, I can actually do it even higher and then took the capital cost which I have just given and all the operational cost took the losses into account and calculated this. If we assume that I use it only once a day, every day I charge once and discharge one, that is the data. And the there are these are the costs. If I look at it at 2 percent interest, the cost is about 3 to 4 rupees per kilowatt hour for both the batteries. In fact, it does not matter whether I use one battery or the other. But if I take 10 percent interest, this 350 or 4 rupees becomes 7 rupees for advanced NMC battery. For LTO battery, it goes up to 11 rupees. L2 battery is lasting longer. Why is it costing more? Because the initial amount that I pay is so high that its depreciation becomes higher. Now, this is a very simple exercise and I have done that in the past, but I want to once again warn. There are plants being set up by government, pushed it and private sector also. They are advised by the Europe and United States. They come and tell put LTO battery. In their country, it is better, probably equal. They have not even understood 
then Indian interest rate is 10 percent or higher, 12 percent will go up even higher. And they were advised and government of India sanctions the money, people sitting there, all the big people, they do not even do simple calculation. Why their advisors come and give them and that is it. But if we have to do it ourselves at our own cost and what makes economic sense, then learn after some time. The advanced and MC will become the better choice for, for now. Tomorrow it may change. If I do two cycles per day, if I am able to do two cycles per day and I have solar and wind together, then I may be able to do one close to two cycles. I may not do two every day. I may do some day one cycle, some day one two cycle, average may be 1.8, 1.7 cycle per day. But if I do two cycle per day, <coughs> slope decreases. See, it no longer goes from 350 <coughs> to 7 rupees, it goes up only from 3 rupees to 5 rupees, under 5 rupees, 4 rupees 75 percent. This also slope decreases. <coughs> But this also does not go to 12 rupees, it goes to more like 7 rupees. But certainly the NMC cell is much better, it goes up to 4 rupees 75 paise. So, 2 cycles per day will be much better, but that is not in my control, it depends on when I need it and all that. So, the actual number will lie somewhere in between. So, my actual cost will be between 4 rupees 75 to 675 per kilowatt hour in India, I have to assume 10 percent. So, that is what I am saying between 4 rupees 75 and 7 rupees per day, in West it is less and you can choose either. If I now take 70 percent is used directly and 30 percent through storage and I put 2.2 2 rupee 50 plus 0 0.3 into S, S is now between 7 rupees to 475 and my total cost will work out to be 3 rupees 95 to 460. So, it would have been more like 2 rupees 50 paise, but because 30 percent goes through storage, I am adding a rupee 50 on the lower side, maybe 2 rupees on the higher side. This is today's cost. Remember, 4 rupees, 3 rupees 95 paise is very good cost. How much do we pay for electricity today? Home users typically pay around 6 rupees, including taxes. Industry users pay more like 8 or 9 rupees. The research park, IIT Madras Research Park, which is classified as a commercial entity, some kind of commercial entity, we pay closer to 10 rupees, all kinds of charges are there. So, we pay much more. Plus, if there is no electricity, I have to use diesel generator. And if I take that into account, no electricity is not there for uh, long nowadays, power cuts are very less, but that will add another rupee average cost a rupee. So, my cost is 11 rupees per kilowatt hour that is what your research park pays. Here my cost will only be 4 rupees including the storage. Of course, this is at the generation point, now I have to add transmission and distribution, all those costs I have to add. I am not, this is the base cost. If you look at, it is still compare, very good compared to coal. So, even with storage it is not that bad. And remember the storage cost will go down further going forward. Okay. So, this is something that I wanted to. Then this course is being taught by me and Dr. Kaushal Jha and Kannan together. Dr. Kaushal Jha is working with us to do another storage. This is not lithium ion battery storage. This is what is called thermal storage. Actually, it was conceptualized by me about 
six seven years back and we have built this it is going to be operational now. You know much of our load in a come a building like research park is air conditioning almost 40 percent a little less 35 to 40 percent. Uh, what do I do? I have a chillers in my basement which chill the water to 6 degrees centigrade and circulates it all over the building. So, the every building uses to this that to cool their water, cool their air and blow the air inside the room. That is the reason um, you are sitting comfortably at 25 degrees centigrade. The chilled water that comes to your room starts at 6 may go up to 7 degrees centigrade. What whenever I have excess electricity, so my main electricity consumption is in chiller, chilling the water. Huh? What if I take see uh, whenever they have surplus electricity, I chill the water to 6 degrees. I whatever excess electricity, I chill even more water and store it in a thermal storage, insulated thermal tanks nothing more than that. If I can insulate my thermal tanks I can just put push the water there and then when I have deficit of electricity I will take that water and circulate it. I do not have to then use the electricity at that time. So, essentially it is acting like a storage wherever there is excess electricity, I am storing the energy of course, in form of chilled water and whenever there is a deficit of energy, I do not chill water any fresh chilled water, I actually use the chilled water to cool the building. This all that we need is a thermal storage. Of course, will the temperature keep going up slightly, if I keep it at 6 deg degree is centigrade depending on the thermal insulation it may go up by 0.5 degree today it is going up by 0.5 degree per hour. So, if I keep it for 6 hours it goes up by 3 degrees which is not as great but it is ok not that bad. But if I put more thermal storage I probably can uh, it will go up by only 0 0.25 degree, degrees per hour. So, even in 3 hours I mean hardly add one then I can chill a little bit of water and mix it, there is no problem. We will assume average loss is about 5 percent huh? and this is what we could do. We have actually built a capacity of 2.5 megawatt hour and we are just starting to use it. This cost is much less than lithium ion cost, why because I am not putting this expensive batteries. What is the primary cost out here? Well, I already have the chiller. I am just using the chiller when there is excess electricity. I always have enough chillers. Storage cost is a one time cost, thermal storage will not cost much. I have to put some extra pumps and valves and measurement devices that is also one time cost. So, not that significant. We will do a detailed cost, cost shall and answer will do that, but including all costs over its operational cost, there will be a little bit of operational cost, not very significant. Remember, however, I can use this storage only for air conditioning, I cannot convert it back to electricity, but the two can work together lithium ion storage and chill burst storage. And frankly speaking, I can increase chilled water storage, building more thermal tanks. That is one area of research we should start doing. Hmm? How do I build good thermal tanks?